Hello and welcome to this presentation which will investigate the circulation patterns of the first native Scottish coinage of David I, his son Earl Henry and grandson Malcolm IV. It will also examine the role of the Anglo-Scottish border in this spatial an analysis. The presentation will begin by presenting a brief historical background to the period, followed by an introduction to the coins of David and Earl Henry and an analysis of the distribution and placing these into the broader numismatic context of England in the 1140s and 1150s. The final part of the presentation will analyse the distribution in relation with the Solway Tweed line. Shortly after the death of Henry I of England in December 1135, David seized control of the city of Carlisle in Cumberland and the surrounding silver mines and was thus able to begin minting the first native Scottish coinage. From 1138 to 1153, there was civil war in England between King Stephen, who had succeeded Henry on the English throne, and Matilda, the daughter of Henry I. David and his son Henry, Earl of Huntington and later Earl of Northumberland, took advantage of this and between 1136 and 1153 pushed further into northern England, eventually controlling the northern English counties of Cumbria and Northumberland, with their extended authority extending into northern Lancashire and parts of Yorkshire. Earl Henry died in 1152, followed soon after by David in 1153, who was succeeded by the young Malcolm IV. Those areas of northern England under Scottish control reverted back to English control in 1157, when the new English king, Henry II, persuaded Malcolm IV to return the lands under Scottish control. Malcolm himself died in 1165 and was succeeded on the Scottish throne by his younger brother, William. So what can the numismatic data actually tell us? Well, it can tell us more about the spatial relationships between the coins of David, Earl Henry and the non-Scottish coins. The spatial relationships can also be used to investigate political relationships in relation with the Solway Tweed line of the Anglo-Scottish border and to what extent this line influenced the distribution of these coins. This can potentially shed more light on the relationship with Northern England under David and Henry's control with that of Scotland and the function of the Solway Tweed border in this period. Before proceeding with the analysis and discussion, it is first necessary to provide a brief introduction to the coins of David and Henry. The first Scottish coins were issued in Stephen's name from the Carlisle Mint and the first Scottish coins in David's and Henry's name copied the last types of Henry I and the first type of Stephen. The coins in the name of Stephen were not issued for mints in Scotland. In the 1140s, David standardised the design of the Scottish coins so that all mints under his control were producing the same design. Earl Henry's coins are very similar to that of his father's. Coins in David's name with blundered legends continue to be issued after his death in, in 1153 alongside the small issue of coins in the name of Malcolm IV. All the coins of David Earl Henry and Malcolm were struck to the same weight and silver content as the official English issues of Stephen. The capture of the working mint of Carlisle, which had been a mint since the early 1120s, provided David with a blueprint for establishing his own mints in Scotland. From 1136, the mint striking coins for David include Carlisle, Roxburgh, Berwick, Edinburgh and the Ecclesiastical Mint at St Andrews under Bishop Robert. As already mentioned, the mints in Scotland did not strike coins in Stephen's name. The mint striking coins of Earl Henry include Carlisle, Corbridge and Bambra, while mint striking coins of Malcolm are Roxburgh and possibly Berwick after 1157. 
though it is entirely possible that Carlisle was still producing the derivative coins in David's name after 1153 until 1157 when it reverted back to English control. There are a total of 58 single finds in this data set. The source for the coins includes the early medieval coin database and the portable antiquity scheme database, as well as data from the treasure trove in Scotland and other published sources such as the British Numismatic Journal's coin register and published notes. Coins listed with an uncertain fine spot or provenance are excluded from the corpus. For example, a David I coin found in South Cumbria or a Malcolm IV coin found in Persia. Coins without a definitive identification are also excluded. For example, a David I or Malcolm IV coin found at Loch Maben. In total, there are 30 coins of David 24 coins of Earl Henry and four of Malcolm. Coins issued by David and Henry in Stephen's name have been excluded from the study. This map shows the distribution of coins of David I. The map shows that coins of David are found throughout the north and east of England with isolated finds in the West Midlands and South East. The main concentrations of finds are located in Cumbria, Northumberland, County Durham and Yorkshire in the north and Lincolnshire in the east. There are no finds presently recorded from the southwest or Wales. In Scotland, the main distribution is in the east and the southwest in Galloway. Hoards where coins of David are present are found in the south, east and west as well as northern England with one example from Scotland, and these include the Dartford Kent Hoard, Nottingham, Sheldon Derbyshire Hoard, Wicklewood, Lark Hill, Worcester, Prestwich, Outchester, Butte and the Isle of Man. This map shows the distribution of Earl Henry coins, the distribution of coins of Henry are concentrated in Cumbria, Northumberland and County Durham, with a small concentration in the southeast and isolated finds in Lincolnshire. Northumberland was under, the, was under Henry's control, while Cumbria was normally held by David, though it has been proposed by Professor Barrow that in areas in northern England under Scottish control, a joint kingship between David and Henry existed. And, as already mentioned, Henry and David both issued coins in their own name from the Carlisle Mint. At present, there are only two single finds of Henry found in Scotland, though the, there were coins of Henry present in the Butte Hoard. Hoards containing coins of Earl Henry totaled to three and are confined to northern England, which are Presswich and Outchester, and one hoard from Scotland, which is Butte. The four coins of Malcolm IV are confined to Scotland, and because there are so few, detailed analysis and discussion of these coins is not possible, while those hoards containing coins of Malcolm total to two and include Lark Hill, Worcester and the Isle of Man. It is now necessary to put the distribution of David I and Earl Henry coins into the broader numismatic context of the 1140s and 50s. During the anarchy period, the more powerful lords and barons, as well as, as, well as ecclesiastics, produced their own coins, and recent studies on the distribution of single finds in England have been undertaken by Richard Kelleher, Martin Allen and Henry Fairbairn. Studies on the single finds in Scotland within the last 20 years have been undertaken by Nicholas Holmes. Kelleher's study shows that finds of Stephen's type 1 are found nationally and those of his types 2 and 6 were restricted to the east and southeast of England. Fairbairn concludes that based on the hoard and single find evidence that by the later 1140s and early 1150s coins were more confined to the areas where they were struck. 
Indeed, this is shown in Allen's study, which showed that the York local coin is, coinage circulated in Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. Several theories have been suggested as to why coins that coins circulated in the areas that they were struck. One theory is that as the civil war and, viol and violence intensified, it became too dangerous to travel beyond local and regional boundaries. Another interpretation is that there was a regional, regional control in that coins from outside a certain jurisdiction were either culled for their silver or reminted into issues that were issued by the local ruler. And it's worthy of note that a lot of the regional issues were of poorer quality than Stephen's or the Scottish issues. A third possibility relates to the acceptability of coins based on their iconography. For example, non-royal and royal images. For example, was a coin with a crown bust and scepter more readily accepted than a coin with a knight? With these three points in mind, it is possible to potentially explain some of these distribution patterns of David and Henry in England. The wide distribution of David's coins may lend weight to the theory that coins with royal iconography were more readily, readily accepted across different boundaries. However, this theory does not explain why the majority of coins of Earl Henry are confined to his territories and their peripheries in the north of England, or the small concentration in the southeast which was under Stephen's control, despite his coins having a crown bust and scepter, or the absence of single finds of David from those areas under Stephen's control. Of course, this may be political, uh, as David, like Stephen, was also a king, or it could be quite simply point that none have presently been found. The presence of Henry's coins in the southeast may point to his activities at Stephen's court, and it is worth noting that all Henry's coins in this area are, are of his first type, which copied the first type of Stephen. What is evident from the maps is that the finds of Prince Henry are more concentrated than those of David, which could indicate that coins of Henry were subject to more coinage control and only circulated in cer certain areas. The final part of this presentation will assess if the Anglo-Scottish border influenced the distribution of these coins. It is important to remember that in this period the Solway Tweed line was not a formal fixed border until the Treaty of York in 1237. It was only the determination of William Rufus, Henry I and later Henry II that resulted in the border being kept at this line. From the distribution maps, it can be said that the borderline did have an influence on the distribution. As discussed earlier, coins of David are found in several areas of Scotland, while those of Earl Henry are extremely rare as finds in Scotland. This shows that despite both sides of the Solway Tweed line being under Scottish control, the border did separate the two sets of coins at this line. There are several possibilities for this. The main one could be the relative status of both David and Earl Henry. David, as King of Scots, was the ultimate secular authority in Scotland, while Henry, despite being the Rex Designatus in Scotland, his main sphere of influence was in Northern England. If this is true, then it would suggest that in Scotland there was coinage control and that only coins of David were permitted to circulate. Though, it has to be remembered that in this period, money wasn't in widespread use in Scotland during this period. This Solway Tweed line can potentially shed further light on the political relationship between David and Henry, as well as that of Scotland and Northern England. It adds weight to the argument of a joint kingship between David and Henry in operation in Northern England, as coins of both men circulated in this area. It can also be speculated that the numismatic evidence shows that the Solway Tweed line was still considered the border between Scotland and England, despite the efforts of Henry and David to integrate the areas of Northern England under their control more firmly and permanently into the Scottish Kingdom.
Also, it can be viewed that Cumbria and Northumberland were still considered as part of England and as such were considered fiefs of the English crown. The fact that very few coins of Stephen are found in this area can also point to the political realities of the region. How the presence and function of the Solway Tweed line would have influenced coin distribution if Earl Henry had succeeded to the Scottish throne and if Cumbria and Northumberland were permanently added to the Scottish Kingdom is completely unknown. Other factors that could also have an influence could be the itineraries and movements of both David and Henry and their households and dependents, though this area needs further research. The number of mints in operation under David and Henry could also be a potential contributor. Henry only issued from three mints, while David issued from at least five. It is likely that the output for coins of David was higher than Henry's. However, no die study for either coinage, coinage has yet been undertaken, and as such, no estimates for either coinage can be provided. The length, of the length of time that coins of David and Henry remained in circulation is also another potential contribution. Tim Crafter has recently published details of the Outchester Northumberland hoard, which contains 10 coins of David and two of Henry. The hoard is estimated to have been deposited in the early 1170s and shows that in Northumberland, at least, coins of David and Henry were still in circulation in the 1170s. The coins of Malcolm IV, as already seen, are extremely rare and their current absence as single finds from England may be due to their scarcity. However, the fact that the only recorded single finds of Malcolm are from Scotland may suggest that they only circulated in Scotland. But because of the lack of evidence of Malcolm's coins, no definitive conclusions can be ascertained. So, in conclusion, the coins of David and Henry were subject to different distributions and uh, factors. And the coins of Henry are more concentration in specific areas compared to the coins of David, which enjoyed a greater spatial range. These differences in the distribution patterns can also be related to the three factors outlined above, such as coinage control and limited travel. It can also be concluded that the Solway Tweed line did have an influence on the spatial distribution of the coins of David and Henry. What is presented here is a very brief overview of the potential reasons as to why that might be the case, and further research is needed to expand these ideas and arguments. The relationship between the border and coins is one of the key research aspects of my ongoing PhD thesis. Thank you for listening.